so this is such a fascinating topic of conversation and it's something I've been working on pretty hard. So in 1972, Richard Nixon wrote Title IX into law and f basically from the get-go it succeeded. So Title IX is equal opportunity in sports and in uh, universities um, for, for anybody. <laughs> and um, it, it worked immediately, but that's because universities are very happy to have whoever pay the tuition. They don't care who pays the tuition, if you're a man or a woman. So it was very, very easy to, to um, implement Title IX. And never mind that, Title IX also underwent many reforms and changes from 1972 onward. 1964, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Title VII, was written into law, obviously, in 1964, and that's equal employment opportunity. And that has never worked, because when you talk about equal participation of women in our entertainment media storytelling, you're talking about a situation where right now you've got almost 100% of our stories being told by men and you know a, a tiny little percentage of, of, of women. If we wanted to change that and we wanted to make it 50-50, you would have to redistribute jobs from men to women, which means redistributing an incredible amount of money and influence, and that's not something that, that, that the establishment in Hollywood wants to do. So Title IX is a, was a much easier thing to do, but what you find is women go into graduate film programs at 50-50, and then they step onto a professional playing field that's almost vertical. And so one of the first things um, that I thought of after the EEOC took this on was why couldn't we find a way for the universities to collaborate with the federal government in um, uh, in uh, a kind of thinking to um, to uh, uh, let me say this a little more clearer. Um, uh, why don't we get the universities and the federal government to collaborate in intersecting Title VII and Title IX? so that not only do you go in at 50%, but when you come out, you, you can actually, women can actually get jobs. I mean, it's, there have been incredible changes in other, in other professions, for example, in medicine. I mean, parents pay, uh, you know, tons and tons of money to have their kids go into uh, these graduate programs, whether it's medicine or law or filmmaking, um, but when you go into uh, a med school or law school, you have a much, much uh, bigger chance of moving into the profession, whether you're male or female, than the film profession. I mean, Hollywood is the worst violator of Title VII of any industry in the United States of America. And so there isn't any kind of uh, similarity between, between um, these professions and, and, and the film profession. So it seems like it would make sense to find a way to intersect Title VII and Title IX. 